So I'm still with uh, Dr. Iswala, and uh, he believes that we don't have to, one person does not have to decide, well, whatever name you want to call it, whether CONFAB, Soviet National Conference, whatever it is, it is important that union is revisited. But uh, because of time, I know we can't exhaust all the topics today. Uh, we will come back and take the conversation further later. But I want to ask her uh, one that is important, especially because of your uh, where you belong, your constituency, academic <laughs> academics. Uh, yeah. What is your your rating of the educational system today, and with respect to how our institutions are conducting research to address? Native problems, not 1847 theory of Sigmund Freud now. <laughs> <laughs> you see, um, again, Nigeria is um, one theater of the absurd. It's um, uh, a near disaster, not a disaster yet, especially when it comes to um, our educational system. In the first place, again, because of the era of 1914, we're operating an educational system that is still heavily colonized. So we need to decolonize our education. Education goes beyond what you read or write. That has probably been studious, been learned, or been lettered, depending on which one you want to choose. Education has to do with orientation, values, upbringing, your total understanding of your society and ability for you to use that understanding to solve the problems around you. So today, what you have is that Nigerian people have all the degrees in the world. Mm. But because those degrees are colonized heavily, they find it almost impossible to utilize these degrees to solve the problems that exist all around them. So to me, we are not properly educated. And that is why we must praise those who are beginning to look inward Africa, especially as it concerns research. I told you when you came in that, um, apart from the Department of Political Science, I now belong to an institute called Institute of African and Diaspora Studies. One point on the agenda of this African Institute, the one in Ibadan, and all other Institutes of African Studies around the world, is to ensure that we begin to dig very deeply into African education, African philosophy, African thinking, to solve African problems. I just finished teaching a course for political thought. Will you believe my brother? that since inception of the University of Lagos, till date, until I took over the course, people have been teaching only the thought of Plato, Aristotle, and the Western philosophers, as if Africans don't think. It was when I got there that I introduced certain dimensions of African political thought, especially those thoughts of Oromila, as encapsulated by Ifa which speaks to politics, sociology, <laughs> against their faith. But some of them also are beginning to realize, because they can reason, mm. that indeed and in truth, if we don't apply our own yastic to solve our own problems, fella is the reference again, we will be perambulating. We will move. And that is the tragedy of Africa today. The African man is trained, socialized, educated, in quotes, to hate his own things with passion, and to love, not only love, be dogmatically loyal to things of the West, even where they don't make sense. We need to challenge that, my brother, including this um, this uh, child's play democracy that we are practicing in Nigeria today. It is black, it is inside bottle, it's like Coca-Cola. All over the world, we are taking the same thing. It can't work. The democracy that we work in Nigeria must be government of the people, but had evolved from the social, political peculiarities and cultural values of the people. If we don't do it, 
we will be wasting our time. So for me, education in Nigeria has not really fed very well. And the reason is because it is colonial education and what my friend Walter Rodney will call education for underdevelopment. It is underdeveloping us. Okay? Until we change it, we cannot move. African universities are not doing the type of research that they are supposed to be doing. Don't get me wrong, they are doing research, but majority of the research endeavors are not addressing the issues in Africa because those who fund the research are from Europe and America. And when people give you money to do research, they have something that they are solving for. So they must directly or indirectly teleguide you towards ensuring that you give the answer that they want you to give. That is why one of my mentors will call Nigeria an anti-intellectual society. Rather than do university researches here, when you go all over Nigeria University, what you see are cars and buses. FGN, four for the office of this man, six for the office of this man, and you see plethora of cars. And these cars, on weekends, they go for parties, oh and bear, and social things. And then you begin to wonder, do you need this number of vehicles to be able to do research in the university? But you go abroad, you don't even know the car that the vice chancellor of a big university like Harvard drives. He doesn't have an official car. Perhaps he moves around in train and drives his own car. So we, oh no, Anodu Fa also says, he says, Okon Losoko, Oko Jusile, Okon Tokobo, Oko Jusoko, Adiva Fono, Ni Ilulo Di Ego, O Masheru Bebatan, Ego Ego, Lok Mala Ilulo Di, O Masheru Bebatan, Ati Goju, Ni Nigeria. And we need to speak the truth to those in power so that they can change their lives for better. If I'm in power tomorrow, please, Nigerians, remember, I may be blindfolded by the spoils of political office. Use the same thing, this same hot words that I'm using to criticize the people in power to criticize me. That is how society works. And that is the only way we can move forward. If you are in position today to just without some things that you feel are not relevant for education purpose to suit Nigeria, including in cultures and practices, what are the things you would, you would remove and what would you introduce? Number one, I'm going to decolonize the curriculum. By decolonizing, I will change certain fundamental aspects of the knowledge that we are giving to our students in the school. Yoruba will say, Eje kati bi pelebe mo leje. Let us begin to eat or lele from the pelebe side. Pelebe is the very, you know, flat part that is always hanging around the, the leaf. You know, it's very delicious, you know. I don't know how to put that in English. Eje kati bi pelebe mo leje. When your child goes to primary school and is right on the assembly and he wants to recite the national pledge, and then the child will say in Yoruba, Nigeria. Forgotten, blah 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 blah. Now I challenge people. Line one, take it as a line in a comprehension passage and ask that child, The child will be looking like Lukose because you are an orilede to lady. So you call Nigeria an orilede, but it doesn't have a day. That's miseducation. Which means Right from the beginning, you are teaching this child how to lie. That's number one. It is still the same education that teaches your child that it was Mongo Park who discovered River Niger. Or it was Mary Slessor who taught them how to stop killing twins. All these very funny colonial leading aspect of our education must be corrected. I just use these as examples. We are going to dig deep. And again, as I said, I'm not going to be the only person, but you bring in the experts in the world to look at this, give them the agenda. We need to decolonize and then be able to develop education that will make us think like the people that we are. So that decolonization we go. Two, I will ensure that the university education is for those who should have it. What we do today, my brother, we shock you. Because people think until you get to the university, you cannot be educated. Therefore, 
everybody wants to come to the university. The colleges of education are dying. Nobody wants to go. Thank, for, I mean, thank God for a tech fund. Otherwise, no college of education in Nigeria today will be able to pay a salary. Mm. The polytechnics are weird enough. The technical colleges are weird enough. And therefore, if you go towards your street today, at the strip of your fingers, you can have 10 people who have PhD. But my brother, when your car is faulty and you need a mechanic, you will run from pillar to post before you get one. How are we moving? Everybody is going in one direction as if we don't know how to segmentize the society. It's not everybody who should be in the university. Some will be technicians, some will be middlemen, some will be this. We need to restructure this thing. So this massification of university education is absolutely unnecessary. My brother, don't you ask yourself, you come into the university to study political science or sociology or philosophy. And then by the time you are here for four years, we teach you all the intellectual things. Theories of Plato, Aristotle, Marxism, things that have the capacity to shape and reshape the society. Now you finish, you are going to work in MTN to sell SIM card. Mm -hmm. Or you are going to work in the front of a bank to be counting money for people. Why did you get that university education? It's a waste. Okay? Whereas, those who are supposed to be doing these things are supposed to be products from polytechnics and technical colleges. You can't study BSc in social sciences or humanities and you begin to count money in the bank. What a secondary school holder is supposed to be doing? That is what we have done to our educational system. So they are not functional. They don't train people to be employable. If I become something today, I am going to work in that direction taking into consideration the contributions, the input from all experts and stakeholders within the system. That is the only way we can move. Otherwise, we still continue to parabolate, my brother. Akuna, Akuna. Senior brother, brother of parabolate. Of parabolate <laughs> <laughs> ah, we will continue definitely, uh, yeah, you know, from here, but we are going to round off at this point today. Uh, Dr. Eswala has been doing a lot, uh, trying to educate. You know, there are very few people who, who are in this category today in this country. You know, we, I, I understand that some people just want to be funded to follow the uh, political lines and all of that. But, you know, when you find uh, radical people who take radi radical point of departures to say we have to reset, you know, uh, you want to see these people often. So, Dr. Isola, thank you so much. I'll come back again. And they will start looking at, uh, you know, uh, the psyche of the present-day Nigerian youth vis-a-vis uh, -vis your own generation. <laughs> what, what do you think? I, I'm part of the youth. Too. <laughs> <laughs> they are the same generation. Don't mind the gray hair. <laughs> uh, okay. That one is tint. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Isola. And thank you, everybody, uh, for watching. Those of you that...